Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm, take two. I'm Christy, and today we have Ecclesiastes 3.11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of trying to look at everything for the positive. Um, when I'm on vacation, feel kind of a little bit rejuvenated. Didn't have to fight to get up. Um, yeah, and honestly, when I came back, I didn't feel like I had to go to work. I mean, I'll get into that here in a little bit. So, first we have, we did in the chapel. So, now we've got um, totally hooked. I think I've got other thing here. I've got notes. You know how it is. Um, so, I've got my totally hooked. I finished this poncho before I went on vacation. And I love it. Just saying. Just saying. I love it. And yes, I wore it. Hopefully I've got it right to say that. Yep. I was worried about where the join was and stuff, but it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, wore it uh, several times. It was kind of nippy on vacation, so it really came in handy. I loved it. Um, wore it off and on the whole time I was there. So I, I really do like it. Um, and that is mine. I am keeping it. Um, so I'm good with that. Uh, so I also, this is kind of a totally hooked, but it's in the basket, back in the basket. So I worked on Christus Poncho and I had said a hundred rows I thought would be fine. But I'm actually going to add one more group of 5, 10, 15, 20. So it'll be 120 rows. Because when I sewed it up, I didn't like how the head wrapped. It just seemed a little tight. Now she's smaller than me. So it is what it is. And I want it to have that blanket feel. And so I went ahead and started, after I unsewed it, I started um, my next... 20 rows or so and so I am definitely gonna get this one done and it should be done this week like I said it was done I sewed it up and I just didn't like the way it laid so I fear adding a few more rows when it wraps around it'll be fine so I got a lot done on that one um, and like I said I plan oops escaping yarn I plan on having it I planned on having it done but then when I got to the point where I thought it was done except for adding the fringe I didn't like the size of it so I'm changing it yeah I'm changing it I worked a lot on this one on vacation so it was one of those things that um, I thought I'd have done but I didn't the other thing that I'm working on is my round the world quilt and I have these are the lavender ones I have one cream colored one done just because I had a little scrap of yarn and so I did you know that's what I'm using them up for and the yarn that I'm using for around the world a lot of it is the same as Krista's so yeah I had plenty of it so Let's see here, I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, and with the white one, 20. So, yeah, and I haven't even used a whole uh, ball of the purple yet. So, yeah, they should be okay. Um, I know that's not much progress. I haven't put them together or anything, Oops. but at least I am making progress. You know, there's actual progress to be seen here. So, um, this one is a free pattern that I found online. It's called Round the World. Um, and then this one is just double crochet. It, there's not really a pattern. I'm doing it in stripes. So, uh, okay. The sweater. Um. I didn't get to take it with me on vacation so and I don't remember if I got to work on this 
from the time that I podcast to now. So I'm just going to show you. Um, I've got the two. So I still have a couple of inches to put on this to make it long enough. It actually would fit me probably right now, but roommate's a little bit bigger. So I've got that. And then I've got the back that I still have to do. Um, now, while I was on vacation, you guys knew that I wanted to find some cute little buttons. I will say this, Branson is ever changing and there used to be a lot of cute little shops and that there still is, but they used to hand make a lot of this stuff and now it's very commercial. They, they have a lot of bulk. Um, so I had trouble finding some buttons. Uh, I went to a shop that we had been to before and I asked the lady, I said, you guys used to have really cute buttons here. And she says, well, we don't do that anymore. She says, what we have left is over here in a thing. And she pointed me in the right direction. And I, I found some that I think are cute. Um, and they're these. And roommate, she, roommate is like, if I don't know what I'm picking them out for, why, you know, what am I supposed to do? And I said, just go with it. And so roommate and I did pick these out, found these, you know, in Branson. And I tried to get them. They had, um, I don't know that I can, yeah, I'm not going to be able to see those very well all laid out, but they had them really dark and then they had some that came out really light and I tried to get them all kind of the same color. Um, I did pick up five and I only need four for the, the thing. That way if one is popped, I can sew the extra in the bottom on the edge of the sweater. So I found those and I really, I'm just going to hold them up to it. Uh, Here's the buttonhole. There's one buttonhole right there. And I don't know if that's going to clink on the thing or not. But it would look like this. And I think they look cute. But, um, and these are handmade. Um, I guess polymer clay or whatever. Uh, so I found those at one of the shops. And one of the things that we did was we would look up stuff. I wanted to go to a local yarn shop and see if I could find. If you remember, every year I try to go to a local yarn shop. Um, I went to Yarn Diva a few years back with RJ. And, uh, but she is over in Keatonville or Kellyville. It's not. I'm probably saying them wrong. I don't remember what town, but it's like 20 miles away. And there really wasn't any yarn shop. So I Googled and there was this one that was quilt something, quilt something and woolens. I thought, well, we'll go there. It's just like right out in Hollister, which we were visiting anyway. And Hollister is just about run into Branson now. So it's not like it's very far. And went in there and there was only one basket of yarn. I was kind of disappointed and I talked to the lady and I said and she goes well she says we started out with with more stuff she says this is just the direction the shop has done and it, it's our biggest money maker and that's she says that's our bread and butter is quilts she says we have a big long arm in there and they do the quilts and uh, there was two of them in there working constant and that's good you know I'm glad that she found her niche I was disappointed again you know not a whole lot of yarn and what was there was commercial so she tells me about this other shop and it is 398 and let me see here I think I've got a card they're available online 
and did I even keep that? That's the problem. Eh, doesn't look like I kept it where I can, where it's handy. Huh. Well, shoot. It's th the letter, the number three, and then it's written out 98. Um, so, yeah, I was looking here to see if I had it in here. Aha! Nope, that's my dentist appointment. <laughs> okay. There it is. Okay, so I have not cleaned out my purse. I still have receipts and everything from my thing. And I'll tell you about that here in a little bit. Okay, so it's 398. And it's 398.com. Uh and if you look on the back, it says, you know, fiber arts, blah, blah, blah. So we went to find that shop. And I don't know. I, I'll show you what I found first, and I'll tell you why it's the only thing that I bought. I found five of these. They are commercial made. They're not real wood. They're, um, I picked them up. They do go through the holes. Um, they looked a little bit big, and I may use them. They're a little bit bigger, you know, and so, let's see here, there's a hole. I don't know. I don't know which ones I'll use, um, but I did, again, get five, and the little handmade ones I paid a dollar a piece for which is not a bad price. I don't mind paying that when somebody has put the work in, you know. So this is like five bucks, not a big deal. These are commercial made wherever, and I gave $2 for them. They're supposed to be four for a dollar, so I should have had a dollar 25, but I'll tell you about that here in a minute. Um, so I've got $7 worth of buttons, but I did pick up five. So whichever ones I decide to use, I've got the others for another project, and I have a spare. So I did accomplish that one thing, although it was kind of not as easy as I thought. There used to be little shops everywhere that people made stuff, and, and now it's just really, really commercial. Um, I know the world is always changing, but... I kind of had like that handmade kind of thing. So, um, all right. That is my buttons. I'll tell you the story about the other shop and in the farmhouse. Now, I am thinking I am going to make a scarf out of this, I think. So, yeah. I, I think it'll be a cute scarf. It'll be a summer scarf more than a winter scarf. And we'll see, because I've got over 262 yards just in this ball right here. And then I have these two half balls. So, yeah. But I have decided this was in something that I was doing. It got thrown in the tote, and I just got thinking about it. I'm like, I think that needs to be a scarf. Just a summer kind of um, scarf. So, anyway. All right. So, I haven't done any spinning or any anything. I've just got the one off. Today, I've got Krista. And that's going to go right into the farmhouse because I did do some souvenir shopping. Sorry, honey. My allergies are messing up. Going from Missouri, had different allergies and then coming back here. So, I'm a little stuffy in that area. All right, so for Krista, I wanted to get her something that said Branson on it, and her favorite color is pink. So we have Branson, Missouri, and I got her magnet for her board that is rainbow, or tie-dye, I guess. And so we got her that, and she'll come today, and she'll probably wear the t-shirt home. <laughs> Just saying, she'll probably wear the t-shirt home, take her little magnet in, um, put it on her board for her artwork or for her 
crayon colors, you know, for her art that she does. Um, and so she'll do it. She's got, um, it's a bulletin board, but it's magnetic thing. So it's dry erase type. So that magnet can go on there and hold her pictures up. Um, now I did two things for me. And one's falling down in the chair. So years ago, I know, I know, I'm a hippie, okay? Years ago, the kids found me this. And I used to be able to, it's very stiff right now, but I used to be able to roll my hair up into a French twist and put this across it. Well, now my hair has grown quite long and I like it. I'm not cutting it off for lots of love anymore. Um, I'm dying it. I'm actually being me, you know. Uh, and I dye it the normal color. It's, I just hide the gray. So, I had found this one. The kids found it for me a good 10 years ago. Well, we were in the same little leather shop. And I found this one. And it is bigger. You can see the difference. And so I'm thinking I can go back to wearing my hair up in a twist with this one. The guy looked at me and he only had like four of them. And so it's got a little heart concho on it. And it's black. So anyway, he looked at me and said, yeah, that's a holdover from the 60s. And I looked at him and I said, but they work. I love them. So I got that. And it, it is handmade. And it's just a circle with little stitching and then a hole put in it and the little concho on the back and these I'm pretty sure they're just bought because it's too straight too perfect you know and I have seen these before in other ones that are commercial done so which you can't fault him he's a leather worker I also picked me up a new little purse I like it and it's even got a little pouch back here that is perfect for my mask so I like that um, I don't have a mask in here I do have another pocket that has my receipts and stuff in it from my uh, ah! sorry that was set on the wrong day not supposed to go off today but I had turned all of my alarms off and on my phone and then when we got back and we're on vacation I went and turned them all on but I forgot to go in there and set what days eight o'clock is for Saturdays when I work <laughs> it's not supposed to be going off today but this is just Tuesday so yesterday I just turned them all on and just didn't get them turned off so I did buy um, myself this and this oops so I really like that um, it's the first time I've really just done a little shopping for me I did get myself three other things they're kind of one but um, roommate likes motorcycles and um, Harleys and stuff so there are two Harley shops we tried to find um, one uh, in Branson and apparently it's not there anymore well we went up to Springfield to where it said there was another one so we go up to the other one and lo and behold, the name of the other shop, there's a line of stuff that's on clearance. And so I think somebody bought it out and combined the two stores and just has one store. Because it said that the Denny's Harley-Davidson was in Springfield and Branson. And then we found, I believe, it's called Renegades. And they had some clearance stuff. So I did pick up a t-shirt, you know, souvenir t-shirt. And it's got Renegades on the back you know and then it's got this front and then and we did the shop those shops on the way home um, in Springfield they had a beautiful one with like this big waterfall or uh, fountain out front that's done in the shape of a Harley Davidson emblem and then it's got this big thing on the front that has Harley Davidson and so I ended up picking up two shirts there and it was called 
Hide Out Harley, or Hide Out Harley Davidson, and it was in Joplin. And I just got a red one that says Harley Davidson. And then I found this one, and I just loved it, but there's a problem with it. Not really. So it's also from Hide Out Harley, and this is beautiful eagle on the front. I love it. But they put this pocket over part of the eagle. And I mean, they're still stuck. The whole eagle is there, and then they sewed that pocket on. And I, the pockets got bling. And I thought about trying to take that pocket off because I would like it better. But the black on black makes it hard to see the thread, and I don't want to put a hole in the shirt. So, yeah, you may see that taken off and just put someplace else. I don't know. But, yeah. If, I wish they'd have left the pocket off that one, but it's my favorite shirt. So, we did, I did, for the first time, do a little bit of shopping just for me. I got three t-shirts, a hair thing, and a purse. Um, now, Worm and Hitch both got new toys because anytime Mama goes anywhere, that's what we do. And uh, Worm also got a new carrier. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll see that he's got a new way to ride in the car. He's learning it. Um, I've got to find a way to, he likes to try and curl up. I need a longer leash part, so I'm going to adapt the other leash part that I have and maybe make it into something else so that he's got a little bit more room so that he can lay down in it. But it's a big square and it floats above the seat so that it's not such a rough ride. And I found it for like 10 bucks. Couldn't pass that up. So, Yeah. Um, let's see. I think that just leaves me talking about three ninety eight, and I don't. I've contemplated this, and I, I just think I should say what's in my heart. Okay. So I went to the little yarn shop, and I was looking for local fiber. Um. Well, let's back up. We did go to Hollister and go to the fiber um, studio there at the college, too. We always do that. They didn't have any woven stuff. They had a lot more stained glass this time and a lot more milled stuff, but not really any woven pieces that you could purchase. It is what it is. So, anyway, back to 369 or 398. Sorry. Uh, we went and found it, and it roommate actually looked at me at one point and left the shop. And when I left, roommate said, I thought you were going to walk out of there. You know, roommate was just like, I can't believe you held it together. So I go into this little yarn shop, and I'm looking to support local farmers. I wanted Miss Missouri hand spun, hand grown. It didn't matter if it hit, was roving or um, yarn or anything. Here in Oklahoma, most yarn shops have a made in Oklahoma section. And that's what I was looking for there. I wanted a made in Oklahoma yarn. I wanted something that I could come home and make and say this is, you know, from Branson or from Missouri at all. Well, I went in to the yarn shop and there's all these beautiful skeins of yarn hand dyed on the walls a very nice shop so I start looking around and there's a lady there that's working and she's a younger girl um, I would have to say probably in her 30s um, she might have been in her late 20s early 30s kind of I don't know so she's there and I go in and start looking and all I'm finding is Superwash Merino. And y'all know how I feel about Superwash. I, I don't like the chemicals. If I'm going to use Merino, I like it to have that um, sprawling of raw Merino. And I don't like it so over processed that it's really slick. So I'm feeling them all and I'm looking at all the colors and and they have bright colors they have 
not so many earth tones, but that's okay. Not everybody has, you know, a taste for earth tones as I do. Um, and I'm reading every base. And I asked the lady, I said, um, I figured that, you know, the commercial, that that was mill spun and they were just dyeing it. Buy and dyes, I love them to death. They have their place. And if you don't like doing all the other stuff, buying already, if you don't spin, buying yarn and dyeing it yourself is amazing. So I'm not against buy and dyes. I have a lot of friends that do buy and dyes and don't own the animals. Um, so I asked her several questions. One of which was, first I asked her if she had a Missouri, made in Missouri area. She says, well, all of this is made in Missouri. I said, well, is this hand spun or is it mill spun? She goes, I don't even know what that means. Okay. So is all of this the same base? You know, because if it's the same base and in that large a quantity, it's probably mill spun. She goes, what do you mean base? And I said, the breed of sheep. And she goes, all of this is superwash merino. And I said, yeah, so it comes from merino sheep. And I said, do you have anything else? She points to this one little skein. She says, well, we have a, a mohair and silk right there. It was commercial spun, number one. Number two, silk and moraine and uh, silk and mohair aren't going to have any memory at all. So you can't really. And it was the commercial frou frou. It, you know, you can use mohair and make yarn and have a beautiful halo without it having all that stuff. Um, I don't know where mohair got that reputation of having that stuff poking out of the yarn, you know. So I looked at her and I said, well, that won't have any memory. And she looked at me and she goes, well, I don't know. <laughs> and I said, so all of this is probably meal spun then. And she goes, I, I don't know what that means. And I said, do you buy this and dye it or is there people sitting in a spinning wheel spinning it for you? She goes, it comes from a warehouse. I looked at her and I said, no, ma'am. I said, it comes from a mill. I said, it, that's what a warehouse is called in a yarn industry, is a mill. It comes from the mill. Y'all purchase it, dye it, okay. I said, so that merino wool probably is coming from everywhere. I said, you don't have any straight maiden Missouri? She says, no, not that I know of. I bought my five buttons and I left. And guys, I never really considered myself a yarn snob because in my mind and in my world, you were a yarn snob if you didn't use acrylics and you only stuck to the high end. I didn't want high end. I wanted local grown. I expected, and it's probably my fault because I walked into that shop expecting her, if she hand dyed yarn, to know the industry. Um, I don't know why you would go into yeah you, dyeing yarn is fun but if you're going to own a shop um you need to be knowledgeable of the terminology that's used and i was just totally let down um just totally that there was nothing but superwash merino in that shop there was no choices other than the color and to me, that's not, not everybody wants superwash merino. Um, I, I don't, I love Lincoln Longwool. I love mohair. I love Southdown. I love Dorset. 
Um, when done right, they're amazing fleece. I just can't believe that they wouldn't reach out to local farmers and have at least a little section. And she could dye the yarn for them if they were having all natural colored, you know. I was just disappointed. And now the question has come into my mind is, am I a yarn snob? Um, I don't mean to be, but it's kind of like going into a candy shop, you know, and the person working there just calls it all candy. They don't know the difference between hard candy and gummy bears. They don't know the difference between chocolate and gummy bears or chocolate and Starburst. You can't work at a candy shop and not know the difference in these candies, right? So why would you be at a yarn shop and not know the difference in yarns? You gotta know your product, right? I just was totally let down. Um, I just don't, it'd be one thing if It'd be one thing if she'd had someone in there who didn't present themselves as someone who's knowledgeable. All the reviews that I read said, yeah, you come into the shop. If you don't know knitting and crochet, you'll know more when you leave. They're super knowledgeable. They're, they couldn't even answer simple questions about their own yarn base. That to me is a big red flag. I mean, I gr great that she loves dyeing yarn, but again, you got to know at least your base. There are tons of bases out there. Um, it, superwash merino base does not have to be 100% superwash merino. It can have glitzy stuff in it, Angelina. Um, you know, silk, it can have so many things in there. And there's so many different variations. You know, I'd, I understand if she wants to stick to superwash merino, but not everybody wants 100% superwash merino. And I get if you're teaching someone, you don't want to overload them with different bases and different knowledge but you should know that each base has its place and you should definitely be able to tell a customer there are different bases. Um, this is just what we carry because it's the best seller or whatever. She couldn't even tell me that. She couldn't even tell me what the base was. I had to read the tag. And then she couldn't even tell me, you know, mill or hand spun. I said, do you have any hand spun? She says, I don't know what that means. Simple term, hand spun, spun by hand. I, ugh, just frustrated, just frustrated. And when I talked to a girlfriend about it, she said, and she's in the industry, she said, sadly, that's what a lot of buy and dies are. And I said, we need to improve the industry. Um, I love that people are getting into it and yeah, you got to learn, but learn a lot first and then go from there. If you're going to start a yarn shop, know your basis. No, yarn is not yarn. Yarn is so many things and not all yarn is created equal. You know, there, there's a purpose for every base and I don't know. Um, I was told that Superwash Merino is the most common sold by Ashford, so it would probably an Ashford base, which is great, but I know that Ashford offers other things and they all take dye. You can have so much fun. If dyeing and selling dyed yarn is your thing, each base takes the dye differently and you can have so much fun playing with it. And I encourage that. 
don't just stick to one because that's what you know. Expand your horizons. Um, and don't try working at a yarn shop. I, I don't know if it was the owner. Um, I don't know if she was just hired. But don't try to work at a yarn shop if you don't know the product. It, like I said, compare it to a candy shop. You know, you don't want somebody handing you hard candy and goes, here's your chocolate. It's totally different. And I, I, I just... I was blown away, blown away by the fact that she didn't know the terminology. She wasn't very insightful. She wasn't very helpful. Um, then, you know, I told you my buttons. I bought these commercial buttons. She had to go and look up the price, which, okay, fine, you know. I said, how much are the buttons? She said, she goes over the ridge, let me look. She goes over and she says they're four for a dollar I said okay so I grabbed two dollars and I had five buttons because I want to spare and there's four buttonholes on the project I'm doing so I'm standing there and she's counting and she's counting and I've handed her two dollars for a dollar thirty something because 13 percent tax on it okay so what are we talking 15 cents on that. So $1.25 plus the 15 cents is $1.50. I think she said that my change was supposed to be 62 cents or something. Don't know for sure. Um, but she didn't even have enough change in the register to hand me back my 62 cents. She hands me back my dollar and she says, I'm sorry, I don't have enough to give you change. I looked at her and I said, put the $2 in there and keep it. How can you run a business and not have change for a dollar? You know not everything's coming up even. There's tax on that. And at 13 point something percent, you know it's not gonna come out to the even dollar every time. So she didn't even have change. So I paid $2 because I told her, I said, keep it. I don't want you to be short in the drawer, you know. So for five buttons, I gave $2 because she didn't have change in the register. How can you not have change for a dollar? I mean, come on. Not even having enough pennies, nickels, dimes. That blew me away as well. So I left very disappointed in the yarn shop at Branson. Um, I don't know that that's their common thing. It was during the week. Um, it was on a Thursday. Maybe that's their slow day and they don't keep a lot of change around. But you would think, I mean, if you went and got a roll and started at your time, that you'd replace those rolls when needed. You know? I just don't get it. Just don't get it. How can you run a shop without the correct change and the correct knowledge? So, it was beautiful yarn. I would suggest if you want Superwash Merino, um, it is mill spun base, soft. It's fine if you find a colorway that you like. You might want to check them out. Um, pay with exact change. <laughs> if you're online, I am pretty sure. And I know that they have like a Etsy shop. Um, so, yeah. It's the number three and then spell out 98.com. So um, it, it is a beautiful base, but it's the only base that they offer is Superwash Merino. And then they've got that one skein of silk and mohair. And I just looked at her, I said, that doesn't have any memory. You can't make anything with that other than a trim or something. So yeah. Anyway, that was my disappointing story from Branson. Other than that, I had an amazing time. Oh, we, of course, did family night. We had tacos for dinner. Um, the kids came up. They didn't get to stay the whole time. RJ didn't get to come. So uh, my daughter and her husband did. But we went and did Inspiration Tower. We went to the hatchery, the fish hatchery. Um, 
we went over to Hollister, we went to the mill, uh, to the university, uh, College of the Ozarks, that's what it's called. Um, we went to some antique museums, like old cars and farm stuff museums, and uh, just wandered around, had fun, um, stopped at some shops on the way home, and yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, I am going to spend today kind of knocking. There's cobwebs in every corner. You close the house up for a week and you got to do cobwebs. So I'm going to clean up the cobwebs, get back to work on that sweater. Uh, the five rows or the 20 rows on Krista's, I will get done in the next day or two. So yeah, I have to work this Saturday. So I've got Tuesday and Thursday off this week. But this afternoon I go and get Krista and she will be in her I know she put she'll put it on the minute she gets it just saying so I'm not even gonna wrap it up I'm just gonna show it to her and you know give it to her and say here you go kiddo um, so yeah but other than that worm and hitch did amazing everything's back to normal back to work um, I will say this my car has a crack in the windshield happened here um, yeah it's another story I, I got a chip a while back got it fixed or so I thought they didn't do it right and now it's cracked all the way across my windshield so I've got to go and call and see if I can't find a new windshield yay me so yeah it didn't even happen in Branson um, I broke down this morning and put on the heater because it was getting kind of nippy but it's supposed to get warmer again this week so I'll probably turn the heater back off <laughs> just saying had to use my defrost and that's what cracked my windshield so all right I'm off of here you guys let me know what you think about whether I'm a yarn snob or not I really I don't consider myself one because I use acrylic I use all bases <sighs> but I was just disappointed and, and I don't know if if I should be or not so yeah anyway all right i will talk to y'all later see you next week have a great week you guys